Welcome back to Little Lee and Rose. My name is Summer Noel, and today we are going to do a glitter flow wood grain geode peekaboo. Um, I've actually done this tutorial with you guys before, but um, it has been pulled from YouTube and it's completely out of my control. Um, I have filed against it to say this is pulled on accident, but who knows whether they will. Uh, go ahead and reinstate it or not and I know a lot of you guys love this tutorial and we're trying to follow this tutorial so I am actually going to refilm it I'm going to use it slightly different colors slightly different decal but um, it will essentially be it will essentially be the same tutorial just different different ideas of things like different colors of things all right guys so I just have my epoxy mixed my a and my b um this is this is counterculture DIY epoxy. I'm using this because ultimately I know that I'm going to send this cup off to a friend that lives in a really hot climate. And just in case it gets really, really hot there, I don't want the epoxy having issues. So counterculture DIY has a 500 degree heat rating. So it will be fine up to 500 degrees. So even if somebody, she leaves it in her hot car, it'll be fine. Okay, so uh, what we're going to start out with is I have my, I mixed it in my silicone little cup. Um, these are great because the epoxy does not stick to these, so it will just um, pop out when it dries. It just pops out like, um, well, like a little piece of dry plastic. It'll just pop right off. I'm going to go ahead and pour this on, and I'm going to smear it all around with my silicone brush. So I'm just going to pour this out as I go and brush it on. You want a nice, good flow because you want the epoxy to move. You don't want it to be too thin. Otherwise, it won't move. You want to get a nice flow. Um, almost what you would consider like a flood coat. Um, so good, thick, heavy coat so it'll move around. Just get it on the cup. doesn't have to be pretty. We're going to be covering it all up anyway with beautiful glitter. So now this cup I just base, base painted with white so you can really see the glitter colors. Uh, but you can really base paint any color you want based on what you want the ultimate look to be and I want white so I base painted it with white this cup has been totally prepped if you've never prepped a cup before jump back on my channel you can just click on little lead rose just under this tutorial and that'll take you to all my other channel my other videos guys and I have a tutorial on how to prepare your cup how to prep your cup how to get it ready for all this stuff we're going to do to it all the glitter and the designs and the painting and the epoxy so that way you can catch up right up to speed with where I was with this cup so I prepped this cup prepped it in white, and uh, then got, went ahead and started this video with you guys, but I had the cup already prepped, because a lot of you that follow my channel have already done all that, and I don't want to waste your time, you guys. Your time is valuable, um, So, if you, but if you don't know that um, process, go ahead and find that video, and it will bring you right to speed with where we're at. So really what I'm just doing is making sure that there is epoxy all over this cup, no holes, no bare spots. And I want a decent amount so you can see there's like extra, so it's almost oh, too much epoxy, but that's what you want. I have the silicone mat underneath my cup to catch anything that drips. Um, that's because it will not stick to that. It'll dry on top of it, but it will come right off. There we go. Okay, so now I've got a little left, but I'm going to go ahead and pour it. Because like I said, you want to have a little too much. There we go. Just a little too much. Not doesn't have to be excessive, but... You want it to be flowing and moving around once you get your glitter on there. Perfect. I have a little epoxy left. I actually need that for a little project for when we're done with this. All right, guys. So here we go. What I've got, I've got five different colors, some chunky, some fine, and we are going to get this flowing. So I got my heat gun. This is a heat gun. You normally see me work with a torch because it's my favorite, but a torch will do this. So if you don't have a heat gun, you can use your torch. Just heat up your epoxy, get it moving. But this one is great because it actually pushes air, and so it will actually help you get a flow. Um, so if you can't get your glitter to move, you can actually push the, the epoxy with the, the, the force of the end of this nozzle. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this epoxy heated up.
Okay, so that is nice and warm. You can see it's dripping. It's even dripping up here because I accidentally hit this with the heat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding our colors. I'm just going to tap them in in random spots as it's turning. So my turner is on. My cup is spinning. This turner is made with a rotisserie motor, guys. Just like a turkey rotisserie. So I'm just going to sprinkle this on in various places around the cup. Ooh, I'm going to catch that because I see that glitter is going to fall. So I poured too much up there. I could see the mound, so I knew it was going to fall. I don't want to waste. Ooh. I should have a plate under there, but I'm being lazy tonight. I'm homeless, guys. This is another one of my homeless tutorials. <laughs> we are currently sleeping in the yard with all my kids. The kids are in a trailer. The nanny is in a trailer. My husband and I are couch surfing. My house flooded while we were away on vacation. Okay, so we're just going to slowly start adding these colors. You can already see the epoxy starting to move and push that glitter around. We're just going to keep adding. I'm just going to keep tap, tap, tapping and adding. I'm going to, I'm going to tap some over across the bottom. Make sure we get some on there. Throw some glitter at it. <laughs> my, my highly skilled technique of throwing glitter there. All right, so there's cup number two. Let's do our last fine. We're going to do our hot pink. It's very, very pretty. Oh, I love that color. I love my neons. Love the neons. Let's see. So you guys can do these one color at a time and catch the glitter as it falls off. I thought I would torture you and make me watch me catch it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Honestly, I don't know where all my stuff is that I would catch it with. Because we are so displaced right now and I just want to keep making tutorials and having fun with you guys. Just gonna... We're just making do. All right, that looks gorgeous. All right, so there's our pink. Okay, we got a little more pink. We'll just go ahead and use all of it. So I'm gonna throw it at the bottom. My again, my skilled technique of chuck it. Whoops, I didn't even hit the bottom that time. Okay, I'm gonna stop embarrassing myself. <laughs> okay, guys, I know that it's harder to hear me because I am wearing my chemical mask. It is very important that I wear this. Now we're just gonna sprinkle these chunkies. I'm gonna catch them in my hand. I'm going to sprinkle these chunkies along. The chunkies will end up ultimately looking like scales, which will be gorgeous. So pretty. I hope this is coming across on camera as pretty as it is in real life. Okay. I'm just kind of sprinkling the chunkies around all over. Like I said, they're ultimately going to look like the mermaid scales. If I put them right on top of the fine color. Because this one is an opal. So it will show the color of what's behind it. So if I put it on top of the pink, it's going to show some of that pink through it. Okay. Now, I wasn't going to do a purple, but I think I'm going to stop and grab some purple. I think the, oop, the, deep, the deep purple will look really pretty on this one, so give me just a second, guys. All right, we are back, and I grabbed a little purple. I'm going to catch it. There we go.
just felt like it needed a little purple. So we're just touching a little in here. Oops. There we go. That's perfect. That's what it needed. Just a little splotch, splotch of purple. Whoops. Well, don't do, don't be like Summer. Don't get crazy. If there's a spot that doesn't have any water. Purple right there. Uh oh. Don't fall over, Epoxy. All right, so now we've got that. We'll put a little more on the bottom. All right, so if you, this is beautiful because you can see it's still moving and blending it all together. It's gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Super excited about it. I'm just kind of picking up some of the glitter off the bottom. Anywhere I see a spot that might need it. Now, if you want it to start really flowing together, guys, you can reheat it. Just like that, you have a glitter flow, and you can see how it's just all kind of blending together, softening all the lines, blurring it up a little bit, changing it, and ultimately, if there's little spots like this one, there's getting like a little clump, it will all settle out. This will, um, it will work fine because we're gonna sand it, coat it, do all kinds of other things to it. You'll see. Um, I try not to overthink it when I'm working on my tumblers because generally, overthinking it is where you're gonna get in trouble. I'm actually gonna pull that off. That's very chunky and heavy. Um, overthinking it is what's going to get you in trouble on most of your cups. Just let it be and then step back and don't have an expectation of what it's supposed to look like. Just be excited about what it does end up looking like. Because sometimes we just have an idea of how something's supposed to look and it ends up almost ruining the cup because we keep fiddling with it and trying to make it something that it doesn't want to be. So I'm just going to let this one turn and do its thing. It's probably going to run for about nine hours and I'll switch it. Well, probably about six hours and I'll switch it to a, a drying rack. And then we'll be back to do the next steps. All right, guys. See you soon. Hey, guys. We are back and this is cured overnight. Now it looks absolutely gorgeous. Somebody actually came over uh, with our insurance company to work with something on our house. And they saw this and they were like, oh, can I take that? And I said, no. They wanted to buy it just like this. It was laughing. Um, and I'm like, it's not even close to being done. Oh, but here we go because it's gorgeous. And this is going to be so, so, so pretty. So I've already mixed my epoxy, guys. I am wearing my chemical mask. Uh, that's why I sound a little muffled. I have my nitro gloves on. We're just going to now add another layer over this because this is pretty smooth, but you can still feel the texture of some of this glitter. And we want to have a pretty smooth surface because we're going to be painting over the top of this and doing some more stuff. So we're just going to go add one little layer of epoxy over the top. And that should give us a pretty smooth surface to continue on with this cup and do all the other cool stuff we're going to be working on it for. So I am recording this one again for you guys because I know there was a lot of newbies uh, that wanted to see the process. And unfortunately that video got removed. So um, we, I'm doing it over for you guys. Dun, 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 because I know that some of you got started on the cup and then didn't know what to do. So this is, it's going to be slightly different colors than the first tutorial, but it will be the same essential idea. So I'm doing this, uh, this uh, epoxy on camera. Sometimes I speed it up for you guys, but I know there's a lot of newbies that are learning. And so it's very good for them to see it, the whole process. If you know this part already and you don't need, you can zoom through this, you guys, you don't have to watch this part. I'm just applying it with my silicone brush. I think I get less issues with epoxy when I use a silicone brush too. Less chance of contaminants from anything I may have already touched with the gloves, just in my workspace and stuff. The, the, the uh, silicone brush is pretty, pretty thorough and you know, it's uncontaminated because I'm not using it on anything else but these cups. Do, do, do. 
deep. A little for the bottom. And sorry you hear all my other turners going, guys. I am one busy lady right now. They're kind of noisy. All right, so now we're just gonna take the torch. I've got a lot left over because I've got about eight other cups I'm working on. So we're gonna take the torch and we are gonna pop any bubbles. You wanna move the torch very quickly. Burned epoxy is a nightmare, guys. It clumps up and it looks like it has a gajillion micro bubbles. So if you are using your torch and you say, because I see this a lot in my group and in other groups where it says, I've got all these micro bubbles, I've torched and they don't go away. What's happened is they've probably paused and sat too long with the torch in one spot and it bubbles up. It gets billions of little micro bubbles and it ruins that epoxy. So if you have bubbles that you can't get rid of, that means you've burned your epoxy in that spot because the bubbles pop very, very easily. And if you hover at all, it will burn the epoxy. You have to keep moving. So even if it doesn't get the bubbles on the first time around, just wait until they come around again. Don't try to keep the heat right on that one spot because it will not work. It will make you very angry. Ooh, that's gonna be gorgeous. All right, guys, so this one's gonna turn for probably about six hours and I'm gonna put it on the drying rack. We're gonna let it cure for about 12 and then we're gonna go on and do the next um, steps for what you uh, the rest of the cup. All right, guys, we'll be back. So this is what a glitter flow looks like after the end. It kind of looks like a unicorn cup. It's gorgeous with all the be beautiful flows through it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into like a peekaboo geo type cup. Um, and we are going to coat this with all white spray paint. So we want to use flat white because we're going to be doing a wood grain on top of it. So we're going to be doing the flat. That way the ink can grab the paint easily and stay in place. Um, so we are going to just take this outside and coat it with white spray paint and we'll be right back. So we have the cup. You can see there's a little bit of texture from where the epoxy wasn't smooth, but I actually like that when I do these wood grain looking cups, I think it makes it look more natural. So I intentionally don't try to get this super duper smooth. It's, it's just a personal preference, you guys. If you want your super duper smooth, I ultimately have an ultra super smooth cup at the end, but with this whole, um, rub away, um, peek booth style and wood grain, I personally just, this is how I like it. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wood grain this cup now, and then we're gonna have it peek through. So we're just gonna, this one I'm using is caramel. And I'm just gonna brush it on. We're gonna be doing a lot of peekaboo, so I don't need to get super duper duper detailed um, with this one because we're gonna be rubbing a lot of it away to reveal that gorgeous glitter underneath. But the chip brush, you can see the chip brush gives it like the uh, different textures you can go from the top down to the bottom the bottom down to the top that adds the different texture as well the different layers and you just kind of keep working it with the chip brush and it's going to give you all those striations down in throughout the ink as it dries when the ink is wet it's harder and it looks real smooth so that's why you just keep working it with your brush to give it the striations and see where it builds up it makes it look like a seam in the wood it's very very cool so if you have not seen my wood grains, um, I've done a couple basics. I've done one that looks like a whiskey barrel or a wine barrel. I made it into a wine barrel, but you can easily make it a whiskey barrel or any. So you can see I'm just going top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, just working it. Gonna work my way all the way around the cup. You don't have to always go top, bottom. It's just, again, personal preference and where you want the texture of the wood grain. I think wood grain are some of my favorites because they just look so stinking cool when you finish them, however you do them. And it's just, it's just such a cool look. By the way, guys, if you were working at a festival or doing a farmer's market where you're going to sell or anything like that, you definitely want to have wood grains in your selections because the wood grain is the most important because they sell all, through the roof. These things sell at those markets and at in-person live events. Uh, people are one, even if they don't buy it, it is what will initially probably draw them in to your shop because they just catch people's eye. They actually think it's a cup that's carved out of wood. It's very cool. 
um, and they're very, very eye-catching in your booth, and they draw people in. Okay, that is looking so good. So see, that's just with the technique going up and down. You get all those beautiful wood ridges. Um, so here we go. We're just gonna keep going all the way around the cup with this. This is called the chip brush, you guys, when it has this weird, it's basically like the cheapest paintbrush you can buy at Home Depot. They're like 50 cents, I think, but they work great for this because they make really good, like I said, really good striations in the wood. Um, I also do these with the foam brushes. I actually think that gives it a really good effect too. So I think you guys have I've done, I think that's what I used in my other tutorial, just to show you guys the different textures and techniques and ways of doing this. I'm trying to get the time to film a softball cup for you guys and show you how to make a cup look like a softball bat. But um, being homeless is putting a little damper on designing and my creativity, kind of. It's just a little intense dealing with construction. You guys probably aren't even hearing it on the camera, but there's a lot of noise going on in my house. They're ripping up the floors. I have no cabinets. Um, it's chaos. And you, if, if you're one of my Facebookers, you kind of have been following my story of my cat flooding my house. <laughs> Damn cat. Um, okay. So now we just got the butt. Okay, so then what I do for the butt is I just stick a few drops on and I brush it towards the outer edge from the middle to the out. And by doing that, it actually makes it look like you've cut the piece of wood off. It's really cool. I'll show you the edges when I do it. And I just keep brushing at it. Sorry, I just bumped the lens with my paintbrush. I just keep brushing it and going out and that just gives you like a center spot but you see here on the edge it just it, it's like the edge of the wood that's been cut here hold on I need two hands to hold that so you can see along the edge it just looks like where the wood has been chopped off and then you have the butt of the wood it's very cool okay now we are going to jump in and start adding the second dark layer. Now I'm not going to get too intense, but I did want this to be a big contrast between the beautiful bright, 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 bright colored glitters and the wood grain. So I'm going to do the second color. Ooh, this one's espresso. The first one was uh, caramel and this one is espresso. So this is going to be significantly darker. Um, I can use the same paintbrush because I'm going from lighter to darker, but you can't do it the other way around. So you can't start with dark and then switch to light. So as you can see, this is significantly darker and I'm gonna do similar to what I did before, but I'm just gonna, as it's drying, I'm just gonna put my striations in it. And this is just gonna be adding some texture and detail and just the separate colors to the cup. I'm not gonna do it all over, I'm just gonna add little bits here and there. Like I said, just to keep adding texture and to make it a little bit darker so that that beautiful bright glitter just gets really shown off. Sorry guys, my hand was probably blocking that one. So when you're working with wood grains, some of them tend to wanna to go green uh, when you do it under the uh, spray paint. So what you gotta watch for on that and test for is um, do a little test run and put your alcohol ink down on a piece of white paper and then spray it with your spray paint to see what it's gonna do. Um, and if it turns green, then you know that's not your right one. I can tell you that latte turns very green under spray paint. Um, the heavier layers of spray paint you add, the more likely you are gonna get um, Sorry, I'm concentrating on my beautiful wood grain. Um, I'm not even sure what I was just saying. I just got distracted by my, the beauty of my own cup. I'm sure I was saying something super important and I'm gonna kick myself for forgetting to tell you guys now. But I just got very distracted by my own cup. How so funny of me. Here we go, okay. Now this one, as again, I wanted to show you there's a difference. So this one, I did not spray paint in between. That was my plan because I always have in the 
in my past tutorials and I wanted you to kind of see the difference between a spray painted one um, in between each color layer and one that isn't. They are different, guys. Um, but my other tutorials, I've always spray painted in between and I'm not doing it on this one. So you can see as I'm doing it, if I had spray painted in between, this would be getting darker and darker on top of the other color. But as I'm adding this, what it's doing is it's actually moving that light color away and we're getting the dark color. So, and like I said, um, I do want this cup to be a little bit darker than just the lightest color and that's why we're using the espresso. Now, I don't want it to be perfect. I just want it to have some texture and variations. So I'm gonna do the same here. I'm just gonna put a little bit on my brush and brush a little bit. I just put the ink on the bristles and brushed out and that's just adding that little bit of texture to the bottom, makes it look more realistic. All right, so now what we're gonna do, that I'm very, very happy with the way this one looks. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take it outside, I'm gonna use triple thick clear coat spray paint, and I'm gonna spray paint this, and that way it's gonna seal this all down um, and make it so it doesn't just disappear, and then we're gonna rub some away, all right? We'll be right back. All right, guys, what you guys just saw me do was take alcohol and a rag, and I keep my alcohol in this really handy dispenser that you just lift up, press, and the alcohol comes up to the top. Keeps it from spilling and being a giant mess. You can get these guys at the dollar store. I have one for alcohol and one for bleach. Um, not bleach, I'm sorry, one for alcohol and one for uh, acetone. That's my alcohol one. And I just, you wanna use alcohol, you don't wanna use acetone because acetone will um, start messing with your epoxy. It, it, whether it looks or feels like it does, it does in fact mess with it. That's why we use acetone to strip cups. Um, so you don't wanna use acetone on a cup that you're gonna be selling. So use ac alcohol, it, you have to use a lot more elbow grease. You could saw me really, really rubbing to get um, this beautiful glitter exposed on this uh, geode. Um, and so then what I just did, it rubbed away, but it left a lot of white. And I'm not a big fan of the white. I know some, it just depends on what color you're doing and what you're doing. But with these wood grain uh, geodes, I don't like all that white. So what I then redo is go back with, um, I used caramel and I just went, no, sorry. Yeah, caramel, this is caramel. And I went back through and I added a little bit over it and then I used a Q-tip to clean it up and then add just a touch of the white around the edges. Um, and that's what you guys just watched me do in high speed. So basically I just rubbed it away, um, the paint, um, and uh, then worked on the edges with the uh, alcohol ink with the wood stain and just filled in some of that white just a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is put this, um, is epoxy this cup all over. Um, and print out my decal and get it started. So that is what we will be doing in the next spot. All right, guys, here we go. So we're back guys and it's all cured. It's ready for the decal. The glitter on it is looking gorgeous. That glitter flow behind it just made it, it really looks like a unicorn or actually it even looks like a mermaid tail. It's so beautiful. The big chunkies look like scales, um, like fish scales. So it really, really works well for the mermaid. Um, you can see I've got her printed out here. I put her on clear sticker paper. Um, I want to see what it's going to look like. Um, with the wood grain behind it. I've never actually tried the clear sticker paper on the wood grain, 
So if it doesn't work, I've got a backup plan. Where did I stick it? I've got a backup plan of one printed out on a regular sticker, but I thought, well, let's do this on camera. It will be fun. Okay, so I'm just prepping the sticker, as you guys like to have seen me do before, where I only lay, oh, it's definitely not gonna be visible. Oh. All right, well, I'm gonna lay it down anyway so you guys can see it, so you can see why you don't do this. <laughs> She's not visible at all. See, well, I guess she is. Well, oh, well, maybe I do like it. All right. I'm going for it. I'm going to lay her down. Completely put the decal down. Let's see how it actually looks. Because it actually does kind of look cool. So I'm just going to press down slow and steady. Let's see what I think about it. I, I don't know, guys. I don't know. It's iffy. Well, it's really a cool effect, but you really lose the tail right here because it's such a light color. You see her body and it's really pretty, but the tail, not so much. All right, we're going with our backup plan. We're gonna go to regular old paper. All right, guys, here we go. Isn't she beautiful? I mean, look at that glitter. The big chunky glitters, they look like scales on a mermaid tail. It looks beautiful peeking through this wood grain. All right, so I left specifically a spot here so that I could have that be where the mermaid looks like she is coming up to the surface. I've got, this is printed out on glossy sticker paper, glossy white sticker paper. This is laser print sticker paper. Um, there are different ones for uh, inkjet or laser. I will have, oh no, sorry. I mean, this is inkjet, not laser. I have a laser printer, but I did not use it for this. So I am putting her right at the top. I'm gonna press down the middle like I always do. Sorry, my big fat arm was probably in the picture. Press her down. It's gonna look so pretty. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually peel the rest of the tail off the paper. Hold it with my hands, put that off to the side. And I'm just gonna slowly work the sticker down I'm doing it slow because so I don't get ripples and wrinkles in the decal. Turn the decal just a touch. Then again, straight through the middle of this decal up here. Then roll off to the left and roll to, oh, sorry, roll to the right and then roll to the left. I'm a little turned around. It's a billion degrees at my house right now and I can't have my air conditioner on in here because of the epoxy. So I'm just sweating and working, guys. Sweating and working. Smoothing her all down. Looks beautiful. All right, so there's our mermaid tail. Gorgeous. Okay, then we're gonna put, let the sea set you free. Oh, maybe I wanna put it right there. I was gonna put it on the back side, but maybe I'll stick it right here. Hmm. All right, guys, what do you think? Back side or down the bottom? Okay, we're gonna go back side because that's where I was originally planning and we don't wanna get too crazy and changing everything up. All right, so we've got our decal. It's gonna say, let the sea set you free. It's right about here. We're gonna line it up. I guess I could have done wet method on this to keep showing you guys that method. If you haven't seen the wet method tutorial that I did, um, I'm really good at lining up my decal so I don't tend to have an issue. But if you need to be able to move your decal around, you can do the wet method and that way you can stick it down, lift it, stick it down, lift it. And that way it's not, and once you get it in the right spot that you love, you can just squeegee out the water. Um, but I have a whole tutorial on that guys. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, just jump on the channel and you will see it. So there we go. Let the sea set you free. And then there's this beautiful mermaid. So we are gonna go ahead. I'm gonna actually, I don't normally seal, but I'm gonna seal spray this in. Um, for under the epoxy and then we're gonna put her under epoxy. So when I say I'm gonna seal it in, what I use is clear spray paint. Um, I'm gonna be using triple thick. I like triple thick because it's a nice heavy thick coat of it without getting drippy and um, it's not any more expensive than regular, sorry that's pa paper crumpling. Um, it's not any more expensive than really any like a regular clear spray paint but you just, it gets a thicker coat on it. So I that's why I like triple thick. I do use both guys, so if you don't have triple thick, don't even stress about it, just use regular old spray paint um, and uh, that will be taken care of for you guys. So just, I'm gonna take this outside and put a clear coat spray paint on it and we'll be back. All right guys, here we go. We're gonna put the epoxy on this. So, oops, I gotta get my mask on. 
put them on my mask. It's a million degrees, so I'm going to be very sweaty, and I'm going to be sounding like Darth Vader, as you guys are used to in my tutorials. You might also see some bugs, because I have to work with my workshop wide open right now, because it is so stinking hot. Um, so what we're going to do is we got our nitrile gloves on, I've got my chemical mask, I've got my epoxy ready, and we are going to go to town. Now this is a lot of epoxy, guys. I did not. I mix for mo more than one cup, as almost always you see me do. Uh, working on a bunch of cups at the same time, so I make a big batch and I just go one cup to the next. I use these silicone brushes because you can see how easy it just pushes the silicone around. I have no contact even with my gloves. Um, it's not messing with this decal at all because uh, we sealed her in. But even if you don't seal her, she'd probably be fine. But I just wanted to check it, make sure Oh, that, that the uh, aqua on this decal is really popping underneath this epoxy. It looks beautiful in person. I'm going to bring the epoxy all the way up to the top, right on the edge of the sticker to make sure we get her sealed in well. All the way down the bottom. All the way around. Easy peasy. So it just depends on how much epoxy you use per on the layer of whether you're going to need two layers over the decal or not. Sometimes you need two, sometimes you only need one. So we'll just kind of gauge how this layer goes on this cup and we will see it when she's all dry and cured if she's going to need a second coat to make sure she's the, uh, the uh, decal is covered well. But I'm adding a little extra epoxy, so hopefully it works. And we don't need another layer. Keep it simple is what I say. How I determine that is if there's any fish eyes or issues or it looks like it didn't get a good seal. There's all kinds of different reasons you would want a second layer. Or if I can still feel the decal through, like the texture of the decal through the epoxy once it's cured, you would want to add a second layer over the top of that decal just to make sure it's all completely smooth. Now what you saw is I just wiped off the epoxy there. And then if you want to be able to reuse your brush right away again, you just wipe it off with a towel. And there you go, the epoxy comes right off. If you forget and you set it down, the epoxy does not stick to these. You can just bend it and it pops right off, guys. So now we're gonna use the torch. This is to pop any micro bubbles or big bubbles. I run it very, very quickly. I don't pause at all. You wanna move fast. This is very, very hot. Uh, the torch is the best for popping micro bubbles, you guys. Absolute best is the torch. When I first started this adventure, somebody told me a heat gun. Well, I've learned the science of this recently, and the heat gun does not really pop the bubbles. It might happen to pop some bubbles as it's moving the epoxy around. It exposes the bubble so it naturally pops, but it's not going to actually pop the bubble. What pops the bubbles is the CO2. That's, that's um, The flame creates CO2, and it sucks. It, the CO2 attracts that bubble towards it, and the bubble, that's how it's popped. So the heat and the fire is what's actually, uh, the fire and the CO2 from the flame is what's actually popping your bubbles. That's why it doesn't work as well with the heat gun. Now the heat gun works, but just not as well. This is gonna be very, very efficient. All right guys, so we're gonna just let this cure. She's gonna roll for probably about nine hours and then we will see where she's at. We'll be back. Well, actually she'll probably roll on the turner for six hours and we'll move her to a drying rack and let her sit for about nine hours. All right, here we go. All right, guys, she is all done. So this one has uh, two full coats of epoxy over the top and to make it nice and smooth, we did a very, I, we, I did a very gentle sanding. We did the first layer, very, very, very gentle sanding, then added the second layer and we got this beautiful, very glossy smooth surface. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I, I love that the way that these large chunkies on here look like mermaid scales. It just really ties the cup all together. Um, so I hope you guys learned some good stuff here. Uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We put out quite a few videos. I'm trying to constantly update and make some new tutorials for you guys. Um, the kit for this one will be with glittergang.org. That's going to include the decals and the glitters. 
and you can get that at glittergang.org. Her coupon code is literally and rose, and it's the and sign. Um, that will all be in the menu underneath this tutorial, you guys. If you look under the tutorial, it'll say literally and rose, and right next to that, you can see a little menu, and you can push read more, and a drop down menu will come, and it will have all the links of supplies that I used here today, how to find me on social media, and how to buy the kit for this one. Um, so we try to make it really accessible for you guys to be able to make this cup. Um, you can do a one-stop shop. You can get the glitter and the decals all at once, and you can create this gorgeous cup. Now, I can tell you this is a very, very popular cup. Every time somebody sees this cup, they want it, and I already know where this cup is going. I have this, uh, I've got a friend who's having a birthday, and I am specifically kind of made this one for her. So I can't sell this one, but I can tell you these will be very, very popular in your Etsy shops as just everyone that has seen this cup wants it. Um, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So I hope you guys learned something fun on this one. It's just a really fun technique to do the wood grain and the peekaboo, and just, just, it's just a lot of fun. Um, we'll see you on the next tutorial, guys. Bye!